In every woman's arsenal, there are many cunning tricks or so-called tests she uses to determine whether a man is suitable for her or not. What is acceptable in a relationship with him and what is not? The test is very simple. The woman artificially creates a stressful situation for the man and watches how he behaves. Many of you might now feel like commenting. If someone starts testing me, they can hit the road right away. But the modern reality is such that every woman tests a man in one way or another. The question is how she does it, what psychological tricks she uses. It seems very complicated, but no. All women's tests are very similar. So in this video, I will specifically, without beating around the bush, tell you how to behave correctly when you realize a woman is testing you. First test, testing your rank. Simply put, the woman needs to make sure you're not a loser. First, she just looks at you. If during an acquaintance or on a date, you're fidgety, stutter, and can't string two words together because of nervousness, then she realizes it's better not to continue communicating with you. Because you're not confident in yourself, and most likely, you have very little experience with the opposite sex. Therefore, it's so important to be able to speak beautifully and confidently, looking people in the eye during conversations. If you have problems with this, oratory courses, pickup courses, or neurolinguistic programming courses are there to help. Next, the woman interrupts you. She might do this unconsciously, because she's used to interrupting everyone. If at that moment, you immediately stop talking and look at her with an open mouth, like a dog hoping its owner will throw it a piece of sausage. Well, if you allow yourself to be interrupted, it's obvious. The woman controls your dialogue. How to behave correctly in such a situation. When she starts interrupting you, don't stop and continue speaking. As a result, she will stop herself. If this doesn't happen, you make a remark to the woman and say, you seem to really love interrupting. Let me finish my thought, and then you can say everything. When you make a remark, the woman will understand that you are confident in yourself and you control your dialogue. Also, when a woman wants to test a man for his rank level, she inquires about his social status. Specifically, she asks what he does and where he works. Therefore, it's so important to be able to present yourself correctly. Even if you don't like your job, you shouldn't say, I hate my job. It's very boring. And my boss is a crazy old man who should have retired 10 years ago. And he still hasn't left. He also sings old folk songs at work at the top of his lungs. Don't talk like that. Because with such an answer, you show that you have problems in life that you can't solve. And if a man talks a lot about problems, he gives the impression of a winner who needs not a girlfriend, but a mommy and a handkerchief. Instead, say, I'm currently working as an engineer. This job has its pros and cons. But I see myself as a programmer in the future, so I'm actively studying this field, and I already have some initial work. With such words, you show yourself as an ambitious man, not a winner oppressed by an elderly boss. Also, a woman might ask another interesting question. How much do you earn? To this, you dryly respond, I make enough. Or you can joke. If you're from the tax office, just say so. I'll just get up and leave. But the woman might continue to press you to find out the amount of your salary. Respond with, I earn enough. And I find the question inappropriate. So let's change the subject. Then she'll understand and stop. But I'll clarify right away. If you hear such a question, it's clear that the woman is mercantile and it's better not to get involved with her. Second test. Readiness to be convenient. When arranging a date, the woman might say, I'll come to the meeting with a friend, or it's inconvenient for me to travel that far. There's a nice cafe near my house. Let's sit there. If you agree to such proposals, the woman will quickly understand that you're a convenient man who can be twisted around her finger. Therefore, to her suggestion to meet in a cafe near her house, reply, it's far for me to travel, so I suggested a place that's right in the middle between my and your house. So it's convenient for both of us. If the woman says she doesn't want to go where you suggested, then you respond, then we'll meet another time. Yes, after that. You may not meet again, but the woman's suggestion to meet near her house indicates that you're not very important to her. She's not willing to travel far for you. And she's meeting you out of boredom, or just to eat at your expense. The same applies to the situation when the woman says she won't come alone, but with a friend. This indicates that she's not serious about your meeting. They, with her friend, either want to eat at your expense or just have fun. Believe me, if she wanted, she would have come alone to the place you chose. Therefore, if the woman says she will come not alone, tell her, I invited you, not your friend. If you can't come alone, then we'll meet another time. With such words, you show that you value yourself and are not ready to make unfavorable compromises for yourself. 
Yes, we also remember about adequacy. And if you suggest the woman meet on the other side of the city, it's logical that it will be inconvenient for her to travel there. That's why I recommend holding the first dates in the city center, where it's convenient for both of you to get to. Third test. Test for the presence of arrival. A woman may start inquiring about your personal life and ask, are you seeing someone else? Logically, if you answer, I'm currently free. But then she might ask another question, the answer to which is not so obvious. Do you often go on dates? And how many girls have you had? When answering such a question, it's important to avoid extremes. Don't say that you have many women and that you meet with many people. From such an answer, the woman will understand that you're not serious enough. And most likely, you'll leave her after the first intimacy. Also, don't say that you rarely interact with the opposite sex and that your last date was when Boris Yeltsin was president. Such an answer will also repel the woman as you will seem inexperienced and even odd. Especially if you come to the date wearing a hat like Boris Nikolaevich. How to answer such a question correctly? I have no problems with the opposite sex, but I'm not one of those who sleep with anything that moves. So, I take choosing a girl seriously. From such an answer, the girl will understand that you're not a womanizer who uses women for short-term relationships. But, at the same time, you're successful with the opposite sex. Also, a woman might ask you, How many sexual partners have you had in the past? As a rule, such a question is asked at the stage of more serious relationships. When answering it, I recommend stating an average number. For example, if you're 30, you can say you've had 10 or 20 partners. Don't say that she's your second or third. But also don't say you've had more than 100 women. Why state an average number? A woman doesn't want to see a womanizer next to her, as there's a high risk of him cheating. But, at the same time, it's important to her that her partner has sufficient experience. I recently had a man in consultation who told his woman that at 27, she was his first. Of course, this scared her off. Fourth test. Intimacy test. On the first dates, a woman might start teasing you, dressing sexily, flirting with obvious intention, so that it happens between you. And if you engage in intimacy, then you've passed the test. If, however, you act like a gentleman who's not interested in closeness at all, then the woman might think you have some male issues. And she'll see you either as a quick shooter a virgin, or an impotent. But also be careful. If the woman starts playing a game called tease but don't give, then when interacting with her, don't pay too much attention to her flirtation. Communicate with her as if you're still thinking, should I sleep with her or not? This way, you'll show that you're not ready to chase her and degrade yourself just to get access to her pussy. Intimacy is something that a man and a woman do by mutual consent, but not a manipulation tool. And, by the way, at the stage of more serious relationships, a woman might try to deprive you of intimacy and say, closeness with me has to be earned. If you comply with her conditions, then you failed the test. Instead, reply, intimacy is such a thing that happens by mutual desire and mutual consent. If you don't want me, then I'll draw the appropriate conclusions. In such a case, the woman will understand that this influence tool does not work on you. Otherwise, if you fall for such manipulation, then every time the woman wants to get something from you or somehow punish you, she will deprive you of intimacy. Do you like such a scenario? I doubt it. Fifth test. Test for readiness to chase her. It all starts quite harmlessly. The woman simply gets offended by something and watches how you behave. Suppose you receive a message that you don't want to show her, or your female colleague calls you about some work-related matter. To which the woman says, you're cheating on me, pouts, makes an offended face, and turns away from you. Seeing such a reaction from her, you start to justify yourself, apologize. In the end, you give in, show the message that came to you, and promise not to communicate with the colleague anymore. The woman understands that manipulation by distancing works wonderfully with you. And the next time she dislikes something, she acts more harshly. For example, after your argument, she might start ignoring you, and even say, we need to break up. After which, you start chasing her, writing messages like, sunshine forgive me, I love only you, and sending her flowers home. Well, if you behave like this, be sure, you failed the test. Therefore, when a woman demonstrates how deeply offended she is, you tell her, being offended or not is your choice, and you're right. But I'm an adult, and I prefer to solve everything through dialogue. So, when you're ready, let me know, we'll talk and discuss everything. After such words, she'll understand that manipulations by being offended and distancing do not work on you. Sixth test. Appearance of a competitor. How does such a test occur? One day, the woman, as if by chance, 
tells you that a colleague at work is paying attention to her. But she's not like that. She's rebuffing him. Then the woman watches your reaction. And in such a situation, men choose one of two behavioral strategies. The first strategy. It's unpleasant for you, but you pretend nothing happened because you trust her. In such a case, the woman understands that she can safely communicate with other men. Nothing will happen to her for it. And such communication can go very far, up to cheating. And you will certainly be unpleasant to realize that someone is hitting on your woman. And she, in turn, does not rebuff him. The second strategy. You make a scene of jealousy. With a scandal, ultimatums, and threats. You think you're firmly conveying your position, and this definitely won't happen again. But you get a completely different result. The woman understands that. When she needs to knock you out of emotional balance again, anger you or punish you for something, or maybe she'll just be in a bad mood. Then she'll use the provocation with another man again. How to behave correctly in such a situation. Tell her, you know, I'm an adult. So, I won't forbid you anything. But for me, the situation where my woman communicates with another man is unacceptable. Therefore, if such communication continues, I will be forced to break up with you. Thanks to such words, the woman will understand that you're not ready to play the cuckold. You're not jealous, but you have your rules and principles. If she's not ready to respect your reasonable wishes, then you'll simply break up. Seventh test. Test four, sacrificialness. The woman tests you for readiness to sacrifice your time and your desires for her. Such a test usually starts with small things. Suppose you agree to meet with her. To which she tells you, I can't make it at that time. Let's meet on another day. But on this other day, you already have other plans. And you cancel them for her. Don't go out of town with friends. Cancel a gym visit. Postpone a business meeting. And go to the other end of the city just to see her. But this is just the beginning. Next comes a tougher test. The test for readiness to sacrifice your principles for her. The woman might ask to tell her the password to your phone and show the chats with friends. She might say that you should delete other women from your friends list on social networks. She can ask you for money for her needs, although it's unacceptable for you. There are many options. You don't like all this, but you give in, just so she's not upset. But that's not all. When the woman understands that you're ready to sacrifice a lot for her, she starts to allow herself a lot. She can insult you in a conversation, snap without reason, start accusing you of what you're not guilty of, and so on. You don't like all this, but you're afraid to lose her. All your thoughts are only about her. And if you leave everything as it is, then you will develop a syndrome of deferred life. You will constantly live in dreams that, when everything gets better between you, you'll return to the gym, you'll meet friends more often. But you need to endure a little so that she calms down and starts treating you respectfully. Unfortunately, I have to disappoint you. This will not happen. The situation will only worsen and eventually end with your breakup. Because the woman doesn't respect you. Therefore, don't sacrifice yourself. Don't go for compromises that are unfavorable for you. Don't sacrifice your principles. If a woman asks for the password to your phone, say, in chats, friends share their secrets with me. And they don't want anyone else to know about these secrets. Therefore, I'm not ready to tell you the password to my phone. If a woman rudely insults you, you tell her, let's agree on something. For me, an insult is a sign of disrespect. And if a woman doesn't respect me, I'm not ready to continue a relationship with her. If the insults continue, it means we're not meant to continue together. Then she'll understand that you value yourself and your principles. Contesting these principles is futile. Eighth test. Meeting with friends. This test has two variations. The first one is that the woman checks whether you're ready to introduce her to your social circle or not. Ready to introduce her to your parents and friends or not. Why does she need this? To check the seriousness of your intentions. And if you've been together for a long time, there's nothing scary about introducing your girlfriend to friends and parents. But if you've just started communicating, I strongly recommend not doing this. Not only can friends say something superfluous about you, but it's also easier for the girl to occupy all your personal space easier to control you. Therefore, personal space and relationships must be there in any case. And you should let the woman into it very smoothly. But there's also another, second, variation of this test called meeting with friends. When the woman pulls you into her social circle, you go to places where she hangs out, you mainly communicate with her friends. And even after the first date, she can invite you to her friend's place. You should not do this under any circumstances. Because not only will you be on unfamiliar territory, and when communicating with unfamiliar people, it's harder to control the situation. But besides this, if you immerse yourself in the circle of your woman's acquaintances, 
She controls the situation. You follow her, not she follows you. Therefore, don't let the woman pull you into her personal space. Try to ensure that your first dates take place in a territory familiar to you, so that her acquaintances couldn't interfere in your communication. And if you've been together for a long time, you shouldn't fully immerse yourself in her world. Don't just go to places she likes and communicate only with her friends, because then the woman will take a dominant role in your relationship, and you'll be like a child she leads by the hand. In such a case, she'll quickly lose interest in you. Therefore, friends, always remember the simple rule. No matter how much you like a woman, don't please her in everything. Always keep your hand on the pulse of your relationship and don't let yourself be controlled. And if a woman communicates with you openly disrespectfully, manipulates, humiliates, then these are not tests. She simply does not perceive you as a man. I hope this video was useful to you. If so, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and move on to reading other articles on my channel.